Good morning. I'm Sherilyn Tirsaran here with the Reynolds Biology 101 ACA students and today we're going to do a lab activity on disease transmission. All right students, so you've read through part one. So we're going to simulate you being at a Saturday afternoon backyard barbecue and we're going to pretend like you're all neighbors. So you all decided to go to the barbecue. And we know that we're talking about disease transmission. And specifically, we are looking at disease that can be spread by saliva. So tell me some ways that you can think of at a party like that where there might be <coughs> disease transmission. What's a way that you could swap saliva with someone? <laughs> yes. OK, if you share a cup. You put your cup down, you think you picked up your cup, but you actually picked up somebody else's. So sharing cup. Cup of drink. <laughs> yes. Double dipping. Oh, double dipping, right? With the chips in the dip bowl. At the chip bowl, chip and salsa. <laughs> yes, what's another way? Laughing in the food that you're cooking. If you're laughing in the food, La lapping. lapping. You're tasting it as you're cooking. Yeah, you're tasting it as you're cooking. Mm hmm. Food. Good. What's another way? Oh, sneezing. Those, yeah, very saliva. Are we talking sneezing. specifically saliva or also other body fluids? Let's just talk about <laughs> saliva for right now. Okay. We will expand into other body fluids later in the lab activity. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. Spitting business challenges. <laughs> spitting, what kind of picnic is this? Okay, spitting. Okay, I think we may then have covered all the legitimate ways. Okay. Aggressive arguing. Aggressive <laughs> arguing. Okay. We're going to call that lively conversation. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do now is uh, each of you are going to take a sample. I'm going to get them out of the fridge here. Okay, so these samples are going to simulate your saliva. And you can just pick one, any one you like. They are numbered for a reason. Pick whatever one you like. Here, I'll get it out for you. Okay, tell me what number you want. 16 it is. Lucky 16. I'll switch to the next one. Yeah, I'll take uh, the, uh, okay. I'll take number fifteen. Okay, number fifteen. Oh, this feels like mm. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Okay. Nineteen is out because we're missing a person. All right. So what you're gonna do? Yeah. Is we're gonna get up and move around, but we're gonna do this in an orchestrated, it doesn't matter, pick one, <laughs> in an orchestrated yet random way. <laughs> yeah, and one person's out, so there's only 18 samples available. Get that. All right. Now, if you looked at the directions, what you have in here is a small volume of simulated saliva. It is. They've been refrigerated for a little while. Ooh, what number is that? You can't have that one because there's only 18 people here. Okay. There you go, and there you go. All right. So what you're going to do, if you look at the directions, you are going to, you've been given three small pipettes. So you are going to draw up a volume of your saliva and 
share back and forth with a person to mix that saliva, okay? Um, then we'll move on to another person and then another person. So we'll be moving around the room. The way that we're going to orchestrate that, though, okay, so everybody's going to need to stand up because you know that mulling around at a party is sometimes random, so you're not always with the same people all the time. You're mixing, you're mingling. So what I want you to do, okay, yeah, we're, okay, we're doing the electric slide now. That's at the party, okay, I gotcha. So what I want you to do is find someone that's far away from you that has the same color shirt on as you. Find that person and switch saliva with them. Yeah, mix it, put it all together as much as you can, back and forth, until it's one solution. You can use the pipettes. You can pour if you want, but you can use the pipettes as well. When you're done with that pipette, you're going to throw that pipette away. So you've thoroughly mixed your saliva with that one person. You don't mix with anyone else just yet. No, none. So we have to get a to your second interaction, but for this one, I want you to look for someone who has uh, the same or similar type shoes to you on. So look and find someone who has the same or similar type shoes. Can't be the same person twice. Yeah, put as much of your saliva in with the other person's to mix thoroughly. Yeah, put all of yours in there. I'll just stir it. How come I have so little now? Me too. You have a lot more than I. When you're done, do. if you used a pipette and you're done, you can throw that pipette out. I can't see how much of We can fix that if it's not quite right, so don't panic. So, your next. Uh, interaction is going to be with someone who is the same height as you. So it can't be someone that you've already swapped with, but somebody who is the same height as you. I'm a little bit tall, but that's not <laughs> so party's over, you're back home now, and it turns out the local health services suspects that one participant at the party had Epstein-Barr virus and may have unwittingly, unknowingly infected others at the party. Luckily, the party was attended by a small group. Each was contacted and asked to submit to an ELISA test to determine whether the virus was transmitted to them. As a participant at the party, you want to know what Epstein-Barr is, how you might have gotten it, how sick it might make you. You're familiar with the CDC, and you seek to find this out. So the next portion of this activity you're going to take your laptops and you're going to go out to the CDC and there's a place for you to summarize what is Epstein-Barr, how do you get it, how, what are the symptoms, what's the treatment. And so we'll do that and then we'll take you to the lab and have you run your samples with an ELISA. So you can go ahead and one per two people, you can go ahead and get out a laptop and we'll do that part. Yeah. <clears throat>
Kissing, sharing, drinking. We have herpes. Yeah. Oh. All right. I think everyone has this. Yep. Yeah. So in this activity, you get to be two people. You get to be the person who participated at the party, but now you get to be the technician who's going to take the saliva sample and run an assay using these micro wells. So each well plate is set up so that two people can use it. You're going to use three rows on one end and your partner is going to use three rows on the other end. And you are going to run three tests of the saliva. You're going to run three known positive tests and you're going to run three uh, known negative tests so that you have a point of comparison. Why would we run it three times? Why be redundant? To increase validity. To increase validity. You run it once, you, you don't know. There may have been an error. So you'll run it three times. And we're going to walk through the process of the different steps. And um, you're going to be able to put your samples in there. So you want to make sure before we move to the next segment that you know what number saliva you had so you don't get confused with whoever you're sharing the well plates with. And we'll move into the next phase of actually running this. Well, thank you for joining us this morning uh, in our investigation of disease transmission. Tigers!